pleased with the way this has turned out. Um, I haven't, I've only cut down to where that sort of outstand is at the bottom. Um, and when I put it in the lathe, I'll be able to just machine that off and this will fall out the centerpiece. Um, this is where the, the filler thread and o-ring goes. And then the t this will be the top and the flint tube will pass down through the middle. And um, the side, yeah, the side finishes. That's why I've done it, see that defect at the top, that's why, that's why I've done it so deep so that I can get rid of stuff like that, this, this defect and any inclusions in this or holes in the casting in the side of which I can't see any, which is great because it means the, the fuel won't le leak out. Um, the center of the casting seems pretty solid brass and um, it's all gone really well the trouble is the more time I put into this the more nervous I am about making a mistake um, but uh, the machining there I left 0.3 of a mil there's some chatter on some of the faces um, I left 0.3 of a mil just for final finishing down to down to size which uh, I'm glad I did now um, and that's quite okay I think for this stage the the holes in the top those are the holes in the bottom the fillers towards the top there and the flint the flint tubes towards the bottom and then on the top side underneath which you can see there are the two holes for sorry that is the flint hole with the um, with the um, deburred edge and these two for the striker on the top and the wick on the bottom. And now when I when I turn this back to the inside edge of this flange, the whole lot of the inside should fall out. Oh yeah, we'll see how we go. Rebates are now machined in for the pennies. The block at the bottom is for the, the filler o ring and so on. Um, there's a few dints and scratches by that one, which I'll have to machine off eventually. Um, and there's some bad vice marks like, um, like that, which are going to get machined off in a minute. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm pretty pleased so far. This is the first soldering. Uh, the black is the flux which is burned off. Um, I will clean it all up, wire brush it and see where the solder seems to be lacking. I've, I've tried to tin in around in around the edge of the ring where the pennies will go because I'll try and pre-solder or pre-tin the pennies so that they drop in easily. Uh, we'll see how we go after a clean up. The inside rebate for the pennies is now just about full of solder. I fluxed it, cleaned it, and cleanliness is, when you're soldering is extremely important. Grease from your fingers is a no-no. And um, I think I've got enough solder in there. There's plenty of solder. I think it's all, I think there's a few enough defects for it not to leak. Uh, so the, the, the best way is to also tin with it's called tinning, it's with copper, uh, it's, it's tinning the copper with solder and I've done that around the outside and you get big globs of solder and that silver ring is will sit on the seating and that will go on the side, hopefully it'll be fuel tight. You can see there's various blobs on this one uh, and this one is, is more so. Um, these blobs, I've just inspected, I might have to solder a few areas again, which are shown bare copper. But these blobs then get reheated and it's hard to see, but you then wipe it with a wet cloth when it's molten solder. It's, oops, it's called wiping. I think it's called wiping and what you do, what you end up with is a very thin, very thin layer of solder, which is what I want because there's plenty in the rebate. And the idea is I will, I will place the penny on the rebate 
heat the whole lot up, get the whole lot to melt, and hopefully the, mount, the penny will just fall into the rebate. I will see, see how that goes. If it falls into the rebate, and I find out, I end up finding out that there's a, when it's all sealed up and there's penny on each side, I find out there's a, um, a leak, then I'm in trouble. So I might just, um, I might try and put one penny in and seal the other side and check for leaks before I put the second penny in. But if the second penny's got a leak, then I'm in trouble again. So it's, that's why I'm taking time to make sure that everything's covered in solder, that the solder takes as well as it can. Uh, remains to be seen whether that's successful or not. The engraving uh, inlay, the inlay that I want to do on this box is quite intricate in places and this will probably be the rosewood, African rosewood that I use for the box which will come up lovely red I think. However, the inlay might, may be difficult unless it's extremely tight grained and hard to CNC so that it forms a good inlay in tremendous detail. So I'm just toying with the idea that I might do the inlay in aluminium um, and so this is an aluminium piece which I've glued with JB Weld epoxy which is the best epoxy I know of just to see if it will adhere the aluminium to the timber and the answer is Absolutely it will. So I will now, oh that's really good bond, so I will now um, experiment with aluminium inlay on this rosewood um, and see see how we get on. It, it might be that the aluminium won't cut um, well enough without sort of feathering and stuff. So um, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Unfortunately I've noticed that this Penny is not exactly central. Goodness knows how that happened, but anyway, it is what it is. This one's um, a bit better, but might not be exactly exactly central. So I'm gonna, in order to machine off all of this solder and flux around the outside, which is always my intention, and to finish off these edges maybe, I need to hold this. Now I could, in theory, hold it here, here, and here in the three-jaw chuck but then the three-jaw chuck is kind of self-centering so this will be off-center so what I need to do is because it's hard work packing out a three-jaw chuck to make it run centrically so I've CNC'd this holder which is um, will that will fit in fairly snug and I'll glue it in if necessary and then I can use my four jaw chuck, which is each each jaw is individually adjustable, and I'll use that to to center this ex exactly right, so that I can machine off around around the coins, and I can do that from both sides because when I push it in, if it's um, it'll be flush for both sides, and if it's not, I'll just machine off the timber at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. The lighter is mounted in the block, which is mounted in the four-jaw chuck. Four-jaw chuck allows movement in both directions, up and down and in and out, uh, left and right. I've got a rough centre marked on the, on the lighter, but the proof of the pudding is the, it's the cutter here. cutter here which is just going around the edge and I'll be able to see how it cuts the solder away from around the edge of the uh, penny and then that'll give me a better idea of uh, adjusting the four draw truck so that I get the penny dead central so that I can machine just right to the edge of the penny and no no further and um, it's a good assistance in this task the new um, DRO so you can see you know it, there it's, it's pretty sensitive and there's the um, there's the x-axis and do all sorts of calculations and movements and that but 
Whereas, you know, this play, this, this play, you see the play, you see the play there, backlash is called, well, there's no play with the DRO, the position is the exact position, and we can just zero it off like this and zero them back and, and check very, very accurately where, where the tool is in, in both directions. So um, we'll have a go at this. I think the lighter will not be plain, so I might have to um, pack out the might have to pack out the supporting block here so that it is, so that it, it is plain and it is perpendicular to the the lathe axis. Um, I expected it wouldn't be plain, and again when when the tool starts to break through the solder and I start seeing areas of brass, I'll then check, I'll then change by packing out with very thin shims wherever I need to, so that eventually the tool is, is just removed all the solder and it's just showing the brass all the way around, then I'll know the light is plain. Um, the penny is a little bit proud on both, both of them and um, we'll have to see what, what, if anything, we need to do about that. Just, just for some reason, could not get it to fit down inside the recess fully on either of them, I don't think. But um, there you go. Um, I'm not sure what I can do about it. I suppose I could heat it up at the end of the day and try and squeeze them in, but I'm, I'm worried that if I press too hard, I'll flatten out the dome or put a dent in the penny. So um, maybe we'll do that on another day. We'll see. This is the first face and I'm reasonably happy. It, didn't, it was harder than expected. Put the chamfer on the corners as well. It was more difficult than expected because the penny is on a different plane to the hexagon and also concentrically it's different as well. So it took a bit of doing to get rid of all the solder but I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. That's the second side, which is a bit quicker because I kind of knew a bit more what, like what I was doing. Less faffing around. Um, still a bit rough. This side was better because it was more plain and more concentric. But um, not as good as I would have hoped, but a um, bit of hand fettling I think will get it back to a reasonable standard. And now I will, because this is glued in with wood glue, and it's been really good, really worked well. I will now cut it out on the bandsaw and then just uh, whittle away at the, the timber um, till I get down to the brass. This is the first result of trying to inlay in aluminium. It's not gone well at all. You can see a vague resemblance between the shape it should have been and uh, the shape it is. I was doing this to see whether I could get the resolution of the um, the belt of, of uh, rounds there, um, but in fact it's, it's nowhere near and if you look closely you can see the glue, there's a gap between the aluminium and the glue, It's I think it's because it hasn't, when I've pushed it in it hasn't registered because this back end here is not, this straight, this, this straight line is it's got nothing to locate it on the left hand side and I think the whole thing's moved. It didn't feel right when I when I glued it up. So I'll have one more go. Um, I'll try this overnight. Let's machine it all up again and um, uh, see what it looks like um, with perhaps a better fit.